Morning boys and girls, I am beyond my workout and I am driving down to FDR, except as you can see, I'm going slow as fuck because traffic is ridiculous because it's Saturday and I got a late start, but I'm hell bent on going to Chinatown and getting some lychees, which is my favorite, favorite, favorite fruit. And you can only get them a certain time of year. And I don't care about them coming in a can or lychee candy or lychee liquor. There's nothing like actual lychee fruit. So I'm going out, I'm hell bent on getting down to Chinatown, even if it takes me two hours, because in this New York ass traffic, it probably is gonna take me two hours. But while I'm driving, I started thinking like, what do I wanna rant about today? What do I wanna bitch about today? And I keep thinking about my clients. So people know I run a company called Gem Trainers. We have about eight people on the team. We engage nonprofits to help them fundraise, crisis management, executive coaching, um, and organizational development. Um, but I always distinguish the experience of my white leaders from my black leaders. Um, and so I work with both, just to be clear. Like I know everybody's like, oh, I thought you hate people. No, I hate white people. Like, no, I don't hate white people. My dad is white. Well, that's not a good example. But I don't hate white people. Like I work with white people. I got white people I think do really good work. And yeah, I support them and, and their clients and whatever, whatever. But my black, here's the distinction. Startups, let's just talk about startups for a second. Not nonprofits that have been around and operating for 10, 20, 30 years. Startups. I meet people who have a vision, have an idea, they have a concept paper, maybe they have a little bit of money, some of them don't. And what I often find is that my black clients or prospective clients, they're doing amazing work. Like they've already figured out how to get clients through the door, they're helping to house people, helping to clothe people, helping to educate people, helping to connect people to healthcare, helping to grow people as entrepreneurs. And then they're trying to raise money and they're wondering why they're not raising money. Then I have my white visionary clients, and none of this is absolute, so don't be a bitch about this and put stupid ass comments under this. Like it's not absolute, it's not every white person, it's not every black person, obviously, I got into nonprofit and I kicked ass and took names and raised tens of millions of dollars in a very short amount of time, which is probably why these motherfuckers kicked me out. But anyway, so my black clients, they're doing all this amazing work. And then my white clients, they have a vision, they have an idea, they have a concept, they have assets, they have collaterals, and that is what they're using to engage philanthropy. They're not selling the fact that they do good work, they're selling the fact that they're going to do good work. They're selling the fact that they have a vision that they can move forward. And so the funders are funding the person and the idea or the vision or the mission, not the work. I raised probably almost $43 million in a very short amount of time, maybe $100 million over my entire career, obviously working with other people. But most of my funders never knew what the fuck I was doing. They never really knew. It was always that one meeting in their office where I'm lying, you know, yeah, I'm gonna change the world if you give me $200,000. I'm telling you, I'm gonna get rid of capitalism if you give me $200,000. How fucking stupid. But I played the game, most people play the game. But I'm telling you, black leaders, I want you to listen to this. Put together a set of documents that tell the story about where you wanna go, your vision, and sell that. Because the more you get bogged down in doing the work, guess what? The less you're gonna fundraise. And if you're a brand new ED and you're not spending 80 to 90% of your time fundraising, then you're not building an organization. And if you build something that you walk away from and it falls apart, you haven't built shit. That's my advice today. That's what I'm, that's what I'm upset about is that black folks think I'm gonna go do the work and then somebody's gonna come along and fund me. No, you're gonna end up not with a nonprofit, you're gonna end up with a hobby. That's what you're gonna end up with, a hobby. So if you really wanna build something, take my advice. It doesn't get lost on me, however, you know I'm not gonna finish this rant without saying this, that part of why white folks can do that is because they have capital to do it. They have connections to people that work in foundations, that went to school with them, that went to Ivy League institutions, and I know lately, because George Floyd got murdered and we had a George Floyd moment, it's over for most of y'all, I know, we had a George Floyd moment, bitches, this whole country's a George Floyd moment, but I know that during that time, Black folks have elevated into philanthropy, except some of those black folks are just as elite as the white folks who've been in philanthropy. 
So that doesn't make it a lot easier for black folks who want to start a nonprofit that may not come from privilege. When I started my nonprofit, I went to Echoing Green. Echoing Green did something for me that I wouldn't have been able to achieve otherwise. Honestly, their reach and their validation was part of what got me into philanthropic spaces. Otherwise, I was just an uneducated, formerly incarcerated black man with a vision of cutting the correctional system in half by 2030 and educating other formerly incarcerated people to be able to do it. I wouldn't have been able to raise money. They helped me out. Doesn't happen for everybody. I don't want to end this rant without saying that I know that that exists. I think I'm done. I'm going to go get my lychees. I hope y'all have a good weekend. Don't let anybody steal your rainbow this weekend. Peace.